Hi, everybody. My name is Brad Ross, and I'm here representing this, um, uh, re representing Mayor Joe Curtitoni in the great city of Somerville, Massachusetts. Um, thank you for all you do. Thank you for inviting us to be part of the amazing regional renaissance and safe, equitable, and sustainable streets. So, Somerville is a small city, we're four square miles. 80,000 people. Our annual operating budget is only about $240 million. You may think from the regional housing crisis that that makes us a community of means, but it's not. We spend about $3,000 per capita on all areas of governance, right? So um, by necessity, we're a do-it-yourself kind of community. And the centerpiece of this presentation is going to be about managing what you measure, right? Um, so here is the kind of the image to keep in your mind as we run through a few case studies. The venerable automatic traffic recorder, about $250 will buy you a treasure trove of data. We have become absolute addicts to this stuff. Your engineers can get them for you. You can also direct hire the, uh, the firms. And within like four weeks from soup to nuts, we get meaningful data on speed, class, and volume. And we're building a library all around the city. So this process and this odyssey started a couple of years ago where, like many of you, like many of your neighbors, uh, we had some concerns about speeding on one of our cut-through routes. So this is about a 900-foot long street in our Winter Hill neighborhood where we've actually deployed a seasonal rubber speed hump for the last several years, but it just wasn't getting the job done. And rather than fight about permanent raised crosswalks, which are too expensive for our budgets, we actually tried to diagnose the performance of the street, and we placed ATRs at three locations. And wonder of wonders, the uh, device that people tell you is going to... Uh, calm the traffic to 20 miles per hour it did but that effect was only measurable within about 50 feet you know four or five houses on each side of deployment so it was really helpful for us and it created some valuable political space for us to continue the kind of the uh, the testing of different and abnormal ideas that's mayor joe's theme right be abnormal take risks it's so fun to work for him so here's an example my team is actually responsible for parks management, parks projects, and construction in Somerville. And we painted a, or we uh, uh, installed a flashing pedestrian crosswalk sign at a mid-block crossing. Frankly, we're a little skeptical of the efficacy of these devices. And yet, when we measured the effectiveness, we found that 50% of the cars before the treatment were exceeding 25 miles per hour. And after the treatment, only about 35% uh, were. On an 8,000 car a day street, that means we've influenced the behavior of 1,200 drivers out front of a playground. Really interesting stuff. Um, kicking it up to scale, um, we've used these red-backed crosswalks and these painted tan curb extensions as, again, an uh, affordable alternative to bump outs and, and to raised crossings, but we've never tried it on a street as big and burly as Broadway, a four-lane cross-section, 20,000 plus cars a day in an environmental justice neighborhood characterized by big trucks and lots of buses, and wonder of wonders, 75% of the vehicles that we recorded before the intervention were exceeding 25 miles per hour. No surprise, this thing's like the width of runway 33L at Logan. So um, we've uh, moved the needle now and we've seen you know, 38, 40% speeding behavior after the intervention. Um, even the traditional thermoplastic crosswalk can be measured to be effectiveness. My good friend uh, and right hand, Mike Tremblay, and I got an earful from some of our residents. Uh, as we were talking about end of season close down, we have lost so many days to rain this season, and we are going into the winter uh, with kind of a half-built street in front of a community elementary school. This is my neighborhood near Tufts in West Somerville, and we had faded pavement markings, and we didn't get through mill and overlay activities. So we are catching an earful, and for good reason, cars are moving too fast in front of the elementary school. We called an audible. We improvised. We got a pavement markings crew out on a Sunday afternoon. We repainted a couple crosswalk legs. We installed a net new crosswalk leg, uh, taking advantage of existing ramps and almost again creating that optical illusion of a, of a, of a high visibility crosswalk and move the needle from 57% speeding behavior to 37% speeding behavior. So encouraging stuff. Is this the end of the road for us? No, of course not. Uh, but it builds confidence. It builds dialogue. Um, even the humble bike lane uh, is going to give us some measurable benefits as we create that optical illusion of a narrow travel lane. And this example is over in East Somerville near Sullivan Square. So we didn't invent these ideas, right? This is a, a, an evolution of necessity. We're standing on the shoulders of giants, great urbanists like our friend Russ Preston from the principal group here in Boston, Mike Lyde and Tony Garcia from Street Plans Collaborative in New York and Miami, um, and our own Mark Chase, Livable Streets volunteer, some of our resident Mark Chase, uh, have taught us a lot about tactical urbanism. We also worked with Jeff Speck, and Jeff's book, uh, the brand new one that just came out, talks about this dynamic. Again, no surprise. Sometimes you paint the double yellow center line and you actually create a false sense of security for motorists and they drive faster. Well, we've just gotten our first performance data to show us that that's the case. So here's an important north-south rangeway that we call Lowell Street, where we actually had the presence of mind to place the tubes before and after, after paving, before the striping. Um, so, you know, just adding our voice to that chorus of growing bodies of research. 
Um, I expected to see that based on the international literature. I didn't expect to see it in a ContraFlow bike facility. So we uh, um, you know, striped this. This is about our third ContraFlow in Somerville over the last year, year and a half, and the first time we deployed a double yellow. We felt that it was warranted, but we actually had the presence of mind again to manage, uh, uh, to measure what we're trying to manage, and we actually found a modest small increase in vehicle speeds after deploying the double yellow. So this is gonna help us stick with our gut and stick with the national literature as we go forward. So um, what do we do with this information? Well, first of all, we commit ourselves to a culture of measurement. We commit our budgets to actually collecting the data. Um, and I'm here to tell you that, again, you can call up a variety of firms and you can get this stuff direct hired uh, with like a 14 to 28 day turnaround. It is a game changer for us. And also, if you're in a municipality, if you're a state agency, if you're an advocate, know that every time a state agency is doing a traffic study in your community or your neighborhood, there's gonna be this data behind it. Um, if you're a city uh, planner, every time a developer is doing a traffic study, buried in some appendix somewhere, it's 24 hour, 48 hour, 72 hour uh, data that you should be taking advantage of. Our industry has done a traditionally poor job of taking advantage of the investment that we've all made in data. So the second major takeaway for us is here's a new opportunity for community engagement, right? How many times do we all get yelled at at public meetings? It's a big part of my job and that's okay. That's what we get paid to do, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's not the only tool in the box. Just last week, we engaged some of our residents on the block. Uh, our good friend Mark actually has a personal radar gun. Uh, so we had some, <laughs> so here you see Mark, of course, and Adam, our fantastic engineer in training, uh, with a couple of flex posts from our attic stock in his arm. Popped him down on a street, created an artificial neck down. All the neighbors hid on a porch, fresh pot of coffee, laptop, radar gun, live experiment, 15% drops in speeding behavior. These types of dialogue help break down the barriers between disaffected residents and folks on the front lines like us. The third way that we apply this stuff is, again, bringing this experimental attitude and this commitment to managing uh, and measuring to our bus rapid transit deployment. So here's, of course, is our you know, humble first experiment in Prospect Street. I'm here to tell you this thing was bootstrapped. This thing was hacked. This was improvised. In the last month of the $3 million job, we realized we had goofed up and had a, a striping plan that didn't make any sense. And so first we had construction barrels, and then we had Somerville's first 24-hour, 12-month-a-year dedicated bus facility. We're psyched about this stuff. On our bus, uh, on our, on our uh, protected bike lane uh, uh, strategies, you know, anybody who's rode Webster Ave, thanks for your patience. We just got it in place last week. Again, totally improvised, totally insourced. Um, so this culture of innovation really is characteristic to what Mayor Joe asks us to do and what our residents ask us to do, right? We have to do more with less. You can find these slides online. Um, if you email transportation at somervillema.gov, Mike, Adam, myself will be happy to engage with you, your constituents, no matter where you are, greater Boston or beyond. So thanks for everybody's time.